it's very hard to know what we can say after this morning's tragic events. What, what we have learned so far paints a grim picture of more senseless gun violence. This time victimizing a young boy who's 12 years old. 12 years old. Gunned down in his home early this morning after shots were fired from outside the house. It is an absolutely shattering experience. And I cannot imagine what his family is going through. What, what I can say to this young boy's family is that IMPT detectives will do everything, and I mean absolutely everything, that they can to track down the shooter. But just as in the experience of far too many victims' families, I do know also that they will need your help too, Indianapolis. So I'm asking for everyone and anyone in the neighborhood or in the wider community who saw something, who may have heard something, who knows something, please help us and help this young boy's family by calling in information. You can contact, contact IMPD Homicide at 317-327-3475 or Crime Stoppers of Central Indiana at 317-262 eight four seven seven that's two six two tips this cannot be the lived experience of families in our city anywhere in our city that is why the city IMPD elected officials community anti-violence groups church groups and individuals throughout the community are doing all that we can, everything that we can think of, to address the spike in deadly violence in Indianapolis. That includes a fiscal ordinance submitted to our City County Council just this past Monday that provides more funding for violence reduction, domestic violence prevention, and youth-focused safe summer programming. Measures aimed at addressing the violence that we have seen steadily grow over the last year in our community and in fairness to our community in cities throughout the country. We are not immune. And that's just the latest addition in a long list of incentives and investments that we have been making. Growing our police department's force, growing our de police department's budget, badly needed updates to technology so that de the department can make data-driven decisions about the deployment of resources millions of dollars in investments in grassroots level anti-violence organizations. The creation of the Office of Community Violence Reduction with an expanded staff of neighborhood peacemakers, some of whom, by the way, were out yesterday for the rest on 34th Street, providing help and resources to this community. Overall, 
it's an unprecedented amount of resources aimed at not just law enforcement, but aimed at the root causes of violence in our community. And yet, it hasn't been enough to stop the deadliest crimes in our city. This much is certain. We need more information from those who know or are aware of the relative few who perpetuate these callous acts of deadly violence. We need our community to say, enough is enough. Violence is not the answer, cannot be the answer to conflict. The lives of too many of our young people are at stake. Again, those numbers to call are IMPD homicide at 317-327-3475 or C Crime Stoppers at 317-262-8477. This information can be relayed anonymously. We just need your help. With that, I'll hand things over to IMPD Chief Randy Taylor. Chief. So early this morning, our officers responded to 3421 Leland Avenue on unfortunately another shooting. Officers arrived along with EMS. They learned that the victim in this case was a 12 year old. The child was transported to a local hospital in critical condition. This young man was visiting his grandparents' residence when bullets entered the home while he was playing video games with his other family members. As a community, let me say this from my heart. I've only been chief for a short while. I've been in law enforcement a long time seen a lot of bad things but as a community here in Indianapolis we have got to take a different approach this makes no sense to be honest a 12 year old just hanging out with family ends up getting shot now I highly it's highly unlikely that 12 year old was a target but we're at the point where people can fire weapons into homes not caring, not, not even thinking what the consequences can be, then we have a problem. I'm praying for this young man, but this would be the fourth child that's passed away this year from gun violence. One, one unborn but full-term infant. You know what keeps me awake at night is just trying to figure, sorry, try to figure out what is, what is going on here. Why are we at this point? It's a police issue from the standpoint that we have to concern ourselves with what's going on and what happens. But it's not a police issue from the standpoint of why people are pulling triggers and doing this stuff. Now we'll do our part to try to get these people off the street, but we do indeed need the community's help in identifying who these people are. I, I can't imagine as a community member, as someone who's raised their kids here, that anyone would think this kind of stuff is okay, because it's not. Now, we'll provide help. We'll do whatever it takes to get people past this, this notion that using guns is going to solve the problem, because it's not. Really, we're all potential victims. It's not, it's not just one area of town, to be quite frank. People who are willing to do these things 
could be anywhere here in Indianapolis. And we, and we owe it to ourselves. As a police department, we owe it to, to the citizens of Indianapolis to, sorry about that, uh, to deal with this. But this is a community issue. We've got to find a way to stop it. I wish I had the answers. We're constantly looking. I have confidence in my detectives and my officers that they'll do everything they can to identify and arrest those responsible for these things. But I would much rather it be an issue where we don't have these kind of things happening so that we're not having to react to it. Would much rather be proactive in this and make sure that these kind of things don't happen. A long road, tough road, but I think that's the way we have to go. Otherwise, we're going to keep responding to senseless killings. Whether you're a 12 year old, a 20 year old, a 60 year old, doesn't matter. It, it's just ridiculous. We've got to find ways to change it. So I'm asking for the community's help in this case, especially, but all the other murders that we've had. If you know something about it, please let us know and let us get these people off the street. Because I can't imagine that we're a community that thinks people that would do these things belong on the streets. They don't. We have a place for it. We need to put them there. Now I will uh, introduce Kenya. Kendra. Kendra with uh, Cafe. Good afternoon. My name is Kendra Noll, and I work at the Community Alliance of the Far East Side. We are sending our prayers to the young man and his family. From the community to the community, we are asking for anyone that has any information about this senseless act that took place at 3.30 this morning to come forward. Echoing the words of the mayor, we have to do something different. The community, we have to stand up for ourselves. We cannot leave it all to law enforcement. The victimizing that is taking place from these senseless acts is impacting our youth. This could be anyone, anyone's child. This could be your child, your sister, your brother, nephew, grandchild. We are not immune, but we have to stand up together and say we are not going to have this in our community. And it takes the community to do so. So we are urging anyone that might have any information to please come forward, report that. You can do it anonymously, and we have to bring this to an end. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Keith Graves, Indianapolis City County Council, District 13. 34th and Leland is in District 13. I come here with my heart open, my thoughts and my prayers to the family that is going through the unthinkable right now. I'm frustrated. I'm very frustrated. Our community is frustrated, and our city is frustrated. We have seen this far too often, and the solution is within our community. We can stop this type of occurrence from happening. I want to ask you, in this particular situation, if you know anything, if you have any idea, if you have electronic monitoring on your home, please share this with our law enforcement. This is our community. This is our neighborhood. This is our parks. This, these are our backyards. Please share that. And I'll leave you with one request. If you or anyone you know is involved in something that could lead to something like this, 
please talk it out. If you know someone is involved in something like this, encourage them to talk it out. Let's put an end to yet another press conference. It was just a year ago that a young eight-year-old was in his house. And he was shot. Today I dropped everything I was doing to be here because this message is heavy on my heart. Please, I want to bring to the podium a community activist who is absolutely tireless in what he has done for our community. Give him the opportunity to say a few words. Antonio Patton, please. Good morning, everyone. Um, I come today with a heavy heart as well as a father, as someone that lives on the far east side and lives in this neighborhood, this community, and also this city. As a father, um, my heart shatters into a billion pieces. I can't relate with the Bills family, nor do I want to relate. I can't feel their pain, nor do I want anyone else to feel this pain. But I am disgusted and I'm sickened in my heart when I see all this gunplay and these babies, that their lives are being snatched prematurely. I am tired and I'm sick and tired of being tired. May 20th, today's my birthday. I get a call that at 2 a.m., a kid can't even play a video game in his house. This is beyond crazy. I have six kids of my own. I have a 15-year-old son. I don't want to bury him. It was not meant for the children to be being buried by their parents. And I, on behalf of the Bills family, I just left the family's house. And for everybody that's behind the, behind the TVs watching, they did not ask for this. Their lives were interrupted without asking. And now they have to deal with it. And their life will never be the same. I'm shaking in my legs right now. And my heart is bursting. And it breaks in a million pieces because we have these young men out here that their lives been snatched prematurely. I'm tired of doing memorials. I'm tired of the, of, the, of the candle visuals. Why can't these cameras be on and we be acknowledging this 12-year-old doing something phenomenal? But no, instead, people have to come here and cut their things and their lives short because we have to deal with this on so many levels. And on behalf of the Bills family, I'm shaking in my legs because I was just at the house. You should see them. You should go sit with them and get a glimpse of what their life is going through right now. The grandmother asked me to say to you all, please pray for their family. And you get this, somebody taking her grandchild. She don't want vengeance, she wants justice. She don't want another grandmother to feel what she's feeling. She just wants those that's responsible to be dealt with. So if you know anything, you've seen anything, speak up because it, wasn't as, it was not designed for these babies to be taken like this. And on behalf of the community and everybody that's standing behind me, we're sick and tired of being tired. If you can't fight, close your mouth. And you won't need a gun. Close your mouth if you can't fight. That's what we used to do after school. You get into it, you put your dukes up. Everybody went home. The one that got whooped knew not to mess with that guy again. You need to take a note from that book Put them guns down. Quit going to these gun, gun shows. It's three E's. Enroll, enlist, and employ. If you want to shoot a gun, get in our military and protect this country to where you can be trained on how to shoot accurately and you ain't killing no innocent babies. But you ain't going to do that because you really ain't tough. You're cowards hiding behind a gun from a long distance and you're shooting sporadically and you ain't hitting no mark and you're hitting innocent people that has nothing to do with the altercation that you have with somebody that they love. Cowardly. And I'm sick of it. And you really want to see something 
you want to see some chaos, you keep messing with these fathers. You keep messing with our community. We're not going to take it. We're not going to take it. We're going to cry, and we're going to make sure our law enforcement knows where you lay your head and where you are. And they're going to come and give you a place to where you can rest your head. And there's a lot of people in there that would love to see you for killing babies. I promise you, I'm heartbroken. And on behalf of the Bills family, we love you. We're praying for you. Our heartfelt condolences and our deepest, sincere sympathies. Capita has a higher homicide rate this year than Chicago does. We're 30 percent above where we were a year ago. A year ago, we were on a record pace. Beyond a societal or an attitude change, what is going on with our data, or are there gaps in the system where people are out on the streets with guns who shouldn't be there? And are you ready to call a summit of all the stakeholders to figure out where those gaps are to plug those gaps? Well, let me begin, Russ, by ha answering your last question first. Um, we have conversations with all of the stakeholders constantly. Um, I'm not interested in photo ops. Uh, Rick Snyder, the head of the FOP, he and I meet on a monthly basis. Reverend Harrison, he and I get together at least quarterly. Shauna and her team, the Office of Public Health and Safety, convenes regularly anti-violence groups throughout the city. So the notion that a summit of some sort is going to be the answer um, is inadequate. What we will continue to do, though, as a city, is continue to make unprecedented level of uh, commitments to resources that are designed to help our police officers whether it be in data, uh, whether it be in, uh, in force and patrols, uh, whether it be, frankly, creating new programs, reaching out to newer and more community groups. We constantly analyze police tactics, and we will continue to do that. So. I guess in final analysis, we are doing literally everything that we possibly can, adopting best practices from other communities where some measure of success has occurred. And we will continue and are committed to continuing to do that. The overarching message you've heard today spoke much more eloquently and more powerfully than I could ever speak it, is that it's going to take all of us, the entire city of Indianapolis, to come together as one city to eradicate the mindless menace of gun violence that affects our city and cities throughout the country. And if we do, and I'm confident that we will, with the investments that we're making in law enforcement, with the millions of dollars each year that the City County Council appropriates to neighborhood-based anti-violence outreach, to the peacemakers in our violence reduction uh, programs, we will make a difference. We can turn this around. Um, and I just say as a final matter, we for the last five years have been committed to investing every available resource in every available program. So we, we have not been static in our approach. We have changed where change is necessary. And I do believe that there are changes being considered at the federal level. I would encourage changes be considered at the state level, common sense changes that an overwhelming majority of the people of this country support in terms of greater background checks, in terms of purchasing of guns, closing the loopholes that currently, those are not Second Amendment foundational uh, changes. Those are common sense approach 
that a vast majority of the people of this city, of the people of this state, and the people of this country support. And so I would advocate. I wish I could advocate changes at the local level, but the Indiana General Assembly prohibits local units of government from doing anything as it relates to the mindless men menace of violence that is stricter than what state law provides. So I simply would respectfully call on our representatives in Washington and our representatives in the Indiana General Assembly to address some of those issues as well. Mayor, two questions. Can you tell us the condition of the Chef Man right now? Yeah, I would have to. Critical. Critical. Ever since I came back to Indianapolis three years ago, I have sat here and heard you talk about crime reduction programs, more money for different programs, and violence seems to be increasing. Tell us what's working. Well, I do think that we are uh, making progress at a woefully uh, underpopulated uh, and underfunded police department. Uh, I believe when I was first elected mayor, we had right at 1,500 sworn officers. Uh, by the end of this year, I hope that we have 1,700 sworn officers out on the street. Uh, we have returned to community-based, beat-oriented policing. We are investing in data and technology that help our police officers uh, understand the nature of the challenges and fight crime more effectively. But, Richard, the message today goes beyond law enforcement. I stand with law enforcement. They are doing everything they can possibly do with the resources they currently have in fighting uh, the scourge of gun violence that affects far too many neighborhoods in our city. The answer is to engage the community and get the community to respond. And that is what our, that is what our request is today, that beyond this tragedy, in every instance of gun violence, I think it, Antonio said it well, Instead of resolving conflicts with a gun, find ways to resolve your differences without using a gun. That's, that's I think, critical. What's the status of the summer violence reduction plan? We are continuing to put the finishing touches on that, uh, Russ. Going back to your previous question, we have delayed announcing that by several weeks because we continue to talk to even more community groups, community stakeholders who want an opportunity uh, to be heard, who have ideas that they want us to consider. And so in a few short weeks, I think we'll be announcing uh, our comprehensive summer strategy. Chief Taylor, can you tell us any circumstances for last night's shooting? Was this a drive-by? Do you believe shots were intentionally fired into this house as a target? What can you tell us at this point? I believe it was a drive-by. A um, number of shots fired into this house. Uh, I'm not sure this house was the target house, um, but they did hit a mark, and they, they hit a child. So. Um, I really, unfortunately, don't know much more uh, about uh, why this occurred or, or the motivation for it or anything like that, but that's what our, our detectives and officers are working on as we speak. Were there other houses hit as well? I don't believe so. Chief, there's been an increasing number of drive-by shootings, particularly in the area where this happened last night. What's, what's happening? I can't answer that, unfortunately. I. I I, I am, uh, I, like I said, I, these are the things that keep me awake. I, I don't know why people choose to do this. I don't know why. Uh, well, uh, my honest opinion is we have to meet people that have not matured emotionally, and this is how they respond. When they're not mature emotionally, they go out, they, they get upset about stuff, and this is the way they feel they need to, to handle that problem. And that's never going to work for them in life, and it's not going to work for us as a community.
Thanks all. Appreciate it.